Right everyone, before I share with you the little caddy we're going to make to be able to make the stamen, um, I'm just going to share with you this flower, which again is a gorgeous vintage flower. I... You can do a lot with this. An awful lot. So, what I've done is, you take a strip of ribbon, I've used a metre long ribbon of the silk rib ribbon that we have. I've taken the wire from one side, but I've gathered, and I'll gather it as much as possible, the wire on the other side. But the side we're going to stitch is the unwired side. So I'm just going to take my needle, hopefully I've got enough on here. And... We're just going to stitch this because this this is the outer edge, this is the inner edge. Um, so basically what I've got to do is just to singe that, just seal that off and we'll seal the other side off as well. So a metre long strip, it's a, an inch and a half wide wired you don't need it wired you can do this uh, just stitch both sides the same just do both sides the same it doesn't matter oops a daisy mine didn't work then but i should have enough on here and you're just going to do a running stitch from one end to the other so if you're going to do it without using any wire at all just do both sides a running stitch uh, you can do one then do the other and then start pulling it in the central one obviously needs to be very small so you need to pull it as tight as possible um, this one, uh, the outer edge obviously, would be uh, a lot wider. So get your central um, section done first, tie that off and I'll show you what I mean by putting the outer edge where it needs to be. You'll see. I do have other videos on this particular flower. Um, these are the Victorian ones. Victorian Edwardian flowers and these were used a lot by milliners um, You don't have to do the outer edge you could take it a centimeter in I've done both and you'll see that in the videos just look for the Victorian vintage uh, Edwardian flowers Type either all three. Type any of the three words in Victorian, vintage, or um, Edwardian, and this flower will show up. You see what it does? Now that's how they used to do the old ruffle along the skirts and jackets and necklines and things like that. But we're going to turn it into a flower. It is a nice ruffle though, if you want to put that on a project, see, really pretty. And I think it was, before it was made into a flower, they did use it um, on the clothing first, I think. I'm not sure, I probably will look that up to find out, do a bit of research on it.
where we've reached the end and like I say you have to go back to the beginning and we're going to ignore the wire that I'll pull out in a minute and we're going to join that up see now I'm only using nylon thread so I don't actually want to bust it move the wire out of the way let's catch that like that take the wire out got that wrapped around my ring okay so that should hold hopefully it'll hold if not we'll have to do it again so move that out of the way and you see how you've got that and then what you do with the wire if I tighten that up and pulled it more it would pucker but you'd get that shaped flower like a dome so I just release it slightly and then twist the wire now this is only thin wire so it's not going to hold that well if I do it too much so what I'm going to do is to knot it as well. Let me just cut this. Take that bit of wire off. Hopefully put a knot in it as well. That's it. And then what we can do is to cut that. And that can poke down like that. And look. Just play around with it till you're happy. And you've got a perfectly good, it's what I call a puffball flower. Puffball Victorian flower. And they're gorgeous. Um, and then what you can do with that is obviously you can add things to it. You know, like that. And then you can put a, some form of a, a flower centre in it or something. But what I like to do is I'm going to use these. And I use three of them. And what I do is I twist the wire so we get a stem. Um glue around it. Oh god, didn't put my glue gun on. It's alright. I've got it on now, so it won't take a minute. So while I'm waiting for the glue gun, we'll come back to that. Um I've got another one ready to do there. I just wanted to share that one with you because it's absolutely gorgeous, is that? And watch any fine wire. Just pop that in there. Just watch the fine wire. You don't want to get that in your fingers. Okay, so we'll just wait for that. I've taken two pieces of square card, it was. Um, let me just see. Measuring. This is the drying rack, five inches by six inches. I laid them on top of each other once they're cut into shape. I just cut the shape out that I wanted. This is the front, obviously. This is the top. This is the bottom. I've marked it out for the two holes for the sticks to go in. And these are skewers, just normal steak skewers. One for the drying rack there, one for the drying rack there. And this is to hold it together. And you can decorate these and paint them. It's just a drying rack. So I'm not that fussed. Now, I do need the glue gun on for this. So while I'm waiting for the glue gun, I'm just going to um, get some more sticks. Yeah, four, but I can put another one in actually. I might want to put another one at the top. And I just use a, that one. Have one of those in your kit, they're very handy. Now I'm using this paint, which is um, the home deco paint. Got it from B&Q. Just a uh, hobby paint. If you want to make them all white, and then you can paint them with nail polish, you can paint them with paint, you can do it with your um, pens, whatever you want to do with them. 
it's completely up to you i'm using 22 uh, uh i think it's 22 gauge wires cut them oh that's only for small ones, but this uh, for a double-headed one. So that's a single head, a double head. So it's three inches for a double head, and two in uh, an inch and a half for a well, just over an inch and a half, maybe two inch for a single head. And what you do? Let me just make sure that's ready. Yeah, I think that's ready now. Let's go back to the flower. Sorry, I just wanted to get this right. That's the underneath. So this is the section I want glue the center let me get my mats I want to stick my board pop on those I mean look just gorgeous and that you can start as a central part if you're doing a bib necklace or something like that and then when that's dry you can just cut off the back like that now sometimes you get the odd one that's too long and sticks out and I don't like that I just snip that one off see but that's fine I'm happy with that now aren't they gorgeous flowers you can use them as um now i once went i went into a posh shop in town and they had like an evening bag and they had one of these uh, with a it was like um on the front of the evening bag it had a ribbon band and in the middle of the ribbon band was this but this was the clutch it was to what was um, they had a, like a diamante giant diamante in the middle of it so they used that ribbon flower with a giant oh somebody had whoever made the bag uh, with a giant diamante and that was the opening for the clutch and it looked stunning it was a silver diamante a big crystal and a black ribbon and this was black as well but it looked stunning it was so elegant but i'll let that dry let's get back to this so what we're going to do first of all is and i'm going to use my uh, it's um we are memory keepers and it's the cropper dial i think they call them so i'm also i'm just going to do another one here pop that put that there and just do that and then we'll just do another one like that hole punch had it a long time i don't even think you can buy them anymore like that right so what we need to do take our skewers and they all have to be cut the same length and this is a drying rack remember so i'm not gonna i probably know more than that Where's my pen? There we are. No more than that. So I'll take my snippers. Don't waste those, they come in handy somewhere else. Actually, I've got a tub at the side of me that can go in. And make sure you hold on to them because they go flying and they've got a point. You don't want to ricochet it onto something coming back to you. I've done that. <laughs> Not nice and it hurts. Crazy. I forgot to hold it. I was just holding it like that. And it hit the uh, deck or something on my desk and ricocheted it back into me. Could have put me bloody eye if I wasn't wearing glasses. Right, so... Now I need my mat again. And we take one of these. Blob of glue on there and a blob of glue on there. 
and I twist it as I move it in twist It'll straighten, don't worry about it, it's not to... It doesn't look like it wants to. And just do that. Like I say, it is just a drying rack. And we pop that on there. Like that. And when that's dry, we take that off. Pop that like that. And all I'm going to do, lift each one up. Just lift each one up and glue it. And the last two There's not really going to be much re um, weight on it or anything like that Oops, that's come out, just make sure they go back in you've got it the easiest little rack you'll ever make bit of card you can use boxes you know that you get buy stuff in a cardboard box you know from cereals doesn't matter what it's made from it's just a rack to dry so we're going to do that but before I do that I need to put a piece of card underneath because I don't want um let's have a look white card here we are I don't want anything dripping onto my board just take a piece of card I like everything it's just at hand exactly where I need everything like that and then we get the paint uh, let me just get the little paint holder I think it's in this one here yeah there we go we used to sell those, but we've none left. So I'm going to get them back in again. I sold those in packs of 12. These little paint pots. And they really do come in handy. So, open the paint. Pour some out. Not going to do much, because you don't need much. Hope you're seeing this. Take your wires... Let me get rid of that dried and what you do is take your pliers and if you can get it in the middle all the better bend it over you can cut it to make sure it is in the middle and you dip now, you might need to do this two or three times. And you just pop them on like that. It's the easiest way to make your own at a fraction of the cost. But like I say, you might need to do them once or twice to get the uh, 
you can't really see the colour on this one but you will do because I might do a different colour next time I do it all right <laughs> it's just so simple now you can do single ones although you can't really stand them up you'd have to put them up probably stand them in something like polystyrene or something like that but uh, we'll just keep doing these double ones for now now like I say if you did them in white okay and then you can um, colour them afterwards try not to let them touch each other but this is one of the cheapest and easiest ways of doing them <laughs> it really is so I'm going to cut these These are a little bit thinner wire, I think. I think I've got mixed wire in this bag. That's it. Just move it round till you get a little head on it. right I'm back just a, a little bit I wanted to add to the video I've got some pink glitter here but you could use any I've also got um, some iridescent ones somewhere but we'll use the pink so we've got a gold fine glitter so take some glue I'm just, any glue will do but I'm just using the white glue for now just to show you what I mean so you dab that in the glue like that and you dab it in the pink glitter and you can put that back to dry I'm just going to get a one to do the gold one see like that look now these can all come off now because they've all dried on the ones you've already done if you don't want to um, colour them anymore or put another layer on I'm not sure if this is going to work I mean it'll work I know it'll work but I need a pin let me just get a pin I need to open the end of this yeah it's not been used for a while just need to open it so we can put a little bit of diamond glaze on there I'm not going to use much I don't need much so if I only wanted to keep them pink but I wanted to make them a little bit shiny you just use a bit of diamond glaze anything that's clear and that will just end up a shiny um, stamen but if I want to go back to this one I'm going to do a couple of these like that see because I might want to put six in a flower or something like that I can move that about if it's going to drip it will drip It'll all drip to the bottom anyway.
Now, I've not put that on right, but it doesn't matter, it can stay like that, I'll be fine. Where's my white plate? Oh, we've got some pink here, so you should be able to use that. I've used this, this pink. So I've got some pink, you'll be able to see it better. Like that. Okay, so these are the first ones I did. Oh, they're not quite dry. No, I thought it was dry, but it's not. Just dip it in. But look. And like I say, you do need to do two or three coats. I mean, I'd put the hair dryer on them. I would, to be honest. Just dip it in, like that. So if they drip, I'll try and get a close-up picture of that one, that's perfect. Oh, let's look, that one looks like it might be dry-ish. You can put the hair dryer on them or your, your uh, heat dryer and it'll dry that and you'll get them done quicker. See? Make your own. That's it. Hope that's helpful. Like I say, you've got a little drying rack and do as many as you want. Thanks for watching. Take care. We will use these in the uh, in a video, our own. Okay. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye bye for now.